songwriters vantage standing here with the patrick arn of gotham records and uh, we're here at the ascap expo 2011. right lovely to be talking with you it's patrick a pleasure my dear it's isn't it fun to here see our again? first night yes absolutely and absolutely. you know we love what you do why don't you just let everybody know kind of where you what you started at and what you're doing now okay um <clears throat> as a child i oh i wanted to be uh, a fireman um and then a doctor um but then i fell in love with music and decided to uh years later to follow that route and i became uh i started djing in college and that was fun that was a lot of fun when everyone was running around drunk i was uh making a lot of money doing fraternity and sorority parties that was cool it was a lot of fun everything i mean you know doing the whole you know 1200s everything it was very cool and i basically um I always was very interested, probably because I grew up in New York and went to school with Clive Davis's kids and everybody else. I was always interested in the business side of music. So um, when I uh, graduated college, I, uh, well, I moved out to L.A., worked for William Mars for a little while. The Northridge quake hit, um, sent me back home to, uh, you know, to my Jewish parents. And uh, that's when I followed my dream and started Gotham Records, record label. And everyone said, you're out of your mind. You can't start a record label. Well, I did. And um, it was very good. Gotham is most known for signing artists, developing them, and then signing them to the majors. Um, one example, Liquid Gang was signed to uh, Jason Flom. We signed Matchbox 20, Sugar Ray, Kid Rock, Jewel. Um, and years ago, it was all about doing the development for the majors. And that was great. Um, everything's wonderful. And... Uh, uh, you know, selling records and companies going through Warner Brothers distribution, everything's great. But then the internet came along. Da, 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 da. Times were tough. Retail gone. Uh, Tower Records gone. So it was terrible. Um, about four years ago, um, you know, I remember coming into my walking into my apartment. I have gold records on the wall, and I can't pay the rent. This is not good. Um, and I want to. Uh, I want to stay in the music business. I don't want to jump out like everybody else is. Um, I don't want to become a barrister at a, at, a, at, a, at a coffee shop. This is what I know. It's what I love. Um, what can I do? And I said, well, you know, the, one of the things I've done very well for my own artists for the label is placing their music in motion pictures, TV, advertising campaigns, and video games. And you were doing that before that was the yes. big craze. Uh, yes, I have gold records for like American Pie and The Fog, and uh, I, I've just yeah, I've worked with NASCAR. I've worked with everyone, and uh, and it's great. It, it can be lucrative, and it's a lot of fun. Um, there were a bunch of artists I wanted to work with, but I didn't want to represent them. This was about four years ago. I didn't want to represent them in a full capacity of signing them to the, to the label. So I said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to represent you on a non-exclusive basis um, and uh, work to just place your material. Well, that was four years ago. I now represent 180 artists through Gotham Music Placement, doing very, very well. And because we, wow. yes, it's good. <laughs> and now, because we have such a large um, catalog of, of material, and I spend so much time going through it and really understanding the songs, um, I am now getting hired to supervise feature films, which is fantastic because it's a win win for the artists. I still have the record label, and I'm holding on to it primarily for the soundtrack work that's going to be connected with the, uh, with the movies that I'm supervising. Plus, things are going to turn around. I believe so, you know? I mean, you know, I'm a single guy, and here I am talking to you, and I'm feeling great. Things are good. Yes, yes. And, you know, I, things are going to turn around. It's a wonderful time. It's, it's a it's, uh you, you got to stay focused, and you got. You, we have to be positive. You know, we're put on this world, put on this world once, and let's enjoy it, and let's try and do it right. Um, I'm very, very proud of what I've been able to do from the standpoint where, you know, I hit the brick wall, but I, I didn't stay down. I said no, turn it around. I speak all over, and you know, it's a schools and everything, and I, I tell kids, look, you know, change, especially something like this, the internet taking over, is out of my. Um, you know, so there are going to be certain things that are out of our control, and we have to surmount them and, and find another way around it to, to stay, to stay in, involved and to keep going. And I did, and I'm very, very proud of that. Um, we appreciate that, Patrick, really. You. Excellent. And it's going very well. I'm, I'm working so hard on um, 
I'm doing a lot of stuff with corporations. I just play 73 tracks with Pottery Barn on Pottery Barn Teen site. Well, there's 73 artists doing backflips right now, and that's great. Um, just had something on America's Funniest Videos last week um, and uh, on, on a whole bunch of movies recently from Prada to Nada, Night Catches Us, and, uh, and it just keeps going, and it's great. That's so neat. So how, you know, first, how would artists find you? What do you look for, and, and how does it kind of work with you guys? What does it take to get you to want to fight okay. for that? Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this, uh, you know, well, I got a call from one of my bands about four years ago when I was really focusing on the label, and they said, you know, I uh, just wanted to let you know at 4 a.m., they tell me this, I just want to let you know that we, uh, we missed the show that we were supposed to play because the drummer overslept. And it's like, thank you for waking me up at 4 a.m. I can't take this anymore. Um, I care about the music, and that's what I love, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, the beauty of this is Gotham is most known for alternative rock. This is Gotham Music Placement represents artists of all different types. I have material from, uh, you know, any money, and I mean, you just need everything. I have jazz, I have hip hop, I have classical, I have everything, and I love it because it's 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 so much more rewarding to me now. Being you know 39 years old, I like to to listen to all types of, of music. I've created the most incredible database whereby I spend about an hour with every single song. I answer everything from lyrics to uh, to theme to everything, so I can find the perfect song that needs to be found ex immediately. I exactly love it. So to get, uh, just elaborate yeah. slightly on that, so you categorize all your stuff. I categorize everything. It's, it's just, it's just <clears throat> um, but the thing is, you're talking about artists and and who can uh, right. how do they get to me? It's just send me stuff to Gotham Music Placement um, or GothamRecords.com, and I'm open to everything. I mean, there are I do I work with instrumental stuff. I work with with children's music. I work with everything, and I and I will continue to do that. Um, look, if the music or the production is terrible, and I feel that I cannot do anything with it, then there might be a problem. But nine times out of ten. You know, it will be fine, and I feel like I can do something. The agreement for the artists, and I, I did this because I said to my, my attorney, who's a close friend, I said, look, the one thing I couldn't stand about the re running a record label was having to consistently, um, you know, let's say I ran into one of my bands, I'd have to remember, my God, did they sign a 360 deal or one plus one? I, I don't want to worry about that anymore. It is the same exact agreement for every artist I recommend. It is uh, uh, represent. It is non-exclusive, um, and I believe in that. And my reasoning for that is simple. I know X amount of people. Joe knows. X, uh, you know, Y or whatever. So they should work with Joe because I don't know who Joe knows and they should work with me because Joe doesn't know who I know. What happens if you guys both pitch a song though? How does that work? Um, it tends to it tends to work out because it's just really who comes first kind of thing. So, okay, because a lot of supervisors are, are really weird. Or have, at least if it's non-exclusive, they at least say um, you have to let us know if, if someone else is, to, you know, we don't, they won't, don't want to be double submitting or right. that they've submitted it and put their work in, but that someone else submitted the same song right. and they wound up getting it. So, all right. I, I have not, you don't come across that. Not come, no, I really haven't. It's, it's a very good tip. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, no. And I'm just, you know, and if they have so, okay, so congratulations to the artist. That's wonderful. Let me work on something else because I'm always working on things. I'm always sending stuff out. Sound like a reasonable guy. Yes. Uh, times have changed, you know. Uh, it's now I view it more as a little bit more about quantity now, you know, because um, they're not paying what they used to. Um, the one thing I'm not happy with is to a, to a great degree because retail is is non-existent for the exception of internet um, there's no question that supervisors and production companies have used it to their benefit and perhaps are not paying what they used to pay out you know to the artist and that's a shame but on the uh, on the opposite side it's based on relationships and those that I've known forever you know your whomever you know Don Kennedy at Sony and all these other people um, you know the, the relationships mean a lot, and every time they come to you, they know they're going to take care of you and so forth. So that's a wonderful thing. I'm doing a lot now with, um, you know, w with with big, uh, you know, corporate retailers. That's a big thing because that's that's easy, and it can help so many of my artists, and it's great. And that's something that you see that's good revenue right. coming in and stuff. Absolutely. Like that. 
You guys heard it here. So again, got web website. Um, it's uh, now here's the thing. Our website is okay. It needs a lot of help, and it's the only reason I haven't changed is because I haven't had a minute to breathe. Um, but it's GothamRecords.com. Um, the one thing I am dealing with is, you know, I named it Gotham Music Placement. Um, it's been both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because people equate it with Gotham Records, who's been around since 1994. But um, uh, some, I, I also want people to know it's not just Gotham Records, alternative rock, whatever. It's it's everything else. So maybe I should have named it something else. We'll see what happens. Ah, keep, the keep the name. They'll uh, know. Uh, but you, okay, perfect. So GothamRecords.com. Yes. We appreciate it. Thank you it so much, Packer. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. Patrick yes. Arn, gracious enough to hang and talk to us with some really helpful tips, and we appreciate it. So Wonderful. on that note. Music business will continue. Amen. 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 Amen That's right. So, yes, on that note, we're signing off for now from the ASCAP, ASCAP Expo 2011. Um, here at the beautiful Highlands, we're about to go and listen to some songwriters inside. Bye, guys. Thanks, Patrick.